All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. This is a video just to answer Abdul who posts something in Facebook trying to deceive us. We will see it together on the screen, and let us do a short study and learn how to get the Abdul busted. You know, deception is one of the most famous way uh, the followers of Islam they try to do with you, and always you need to be aware that they will never stop. So you have to be aware of their games and how they try to deceive you. Always Muslim, when he tried to convince you of something, he caught for you verses from the Quran, which is not valid. You see, the Quran is not the same as the Bible. <clears throat> the Muslim believe in something that's called abrogation. When Muhammad was weak, he was speaking nice, kind, etc. And when Muhammad became strong, he wanted to kill everybody. So the Muslim, what they, what they do in order to deceive you, they caught for you verses when Muhammad was weak. And when he was trying to be, uh, you know, avoiding uh, conflict with others because he cannot stand for them. <clears throat> so be aware of that. <clears throat> Let's drink some water. <clears throat> Let us see what this Abdul he posts for us in Facebook. Mr. Yasin Raouf, he's opposed to Christian Prince. Quran chapter 2, verse number 213. Mankind was, uh, uh, was of one religion. And this is the translation he chose. Before their division. Hmm. Do you see it says before their division? <laughs> then Allah has sent prophet as bringer for good tiding and warners and send down with them scriptures in truth to judge between the people concerning that which they differed you know when you read this sound like very uh, you know a decent uh, person uh, a person who is very spiritual you know mankind mankind there was one religion before their division but what people do not know that Islam believe that the, the deviation or the, the, the division between between mankind it was because of the plan of Allah and in this verse here we see a very clear contradiction for other verses in the Quran so when the Quran says that mankind they used to be with one religion and then the Muslim between two brackets they say before their deviation there that's mean it's you are the one who divide it's mean it's you who create this division and then allah he decide to help you because of your division he tried to bring you together and like look right away the abdul he caught for us another verse right after let us read the verse after it just to show you how they try to play their games indeed the religion is in the sight of allah is islam and those who were given scriptures do not differ except after knowledge had come to them out of jealous a jealous jealous animosity between themselves and whoever disbelieves in the verses of Allah then indeed Allah is swift uh, taking account and taking account now here you will notice Muhammad and the Muslims like you know you try you know like let, let's make connection between this verse in the front of us here 2 to 13 and the verse after it why the Muslim he called for us this verse this verse try to make Muhammad and Islam look like a nice religion trying just to fix a differ or differences between us the verse after it it's confirming that there is only one truth it is Islam and then the verse after the chapter 3 verse number 64 says say O people of the scriptures which mean Christians and Jews come come to a word that equitable between us and you that we will not worship except Allah and not associate anything with him and not to take an, one another as Lord instead of Allah so what is the word we can share together that we should worship the same God of Islam and that will make Allah happy the funny the Muslim they always say speak about not to associate with Allah but they are the one who associate with Allah 
when a Muslim he takes shahada, he put the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah. The Quran, <clears throat> and we will show you that, always associate the name of Muhammad and the name of Allah. As an example, in the Quran, we find that the obedience of Allah is not important as much the obedience to, of Muhammad, which means Muhammad became more important than Allah himself. So we find here in the Quran the following. And by the way, we'll go back a little bit <clears throat> to the verses we showed you because we will get them busted. We did not get them busted yet. Uh, we will find here verses saying that woman yata al Rasul faqad ata Allah. The one who obey Muhammad, he obey Allah. Which means the one who obey Allah, not necessarily obeying Muhammad. So in order for you to be a Christian, come to a word with the Muslims is not to associate with Allah anyone, but we have to associate the obedience of Muhammad over the obedience of God. <clears throat> you see, Muslims, we don't associate anyone with God. No, no, no. But we elevate Muhammad obedience over the obedience of God. As an example, the Quran says you do muta Muhammad. He says you don't do muta anymore, according to the Muslims. Which one the Muslim should follow? Muhammad. There's tons of rules in the Quran is invalid. As we said, there is something that's called abrogation. But imagine in Islam, Muhammad abrogate the word of Allah, which means Muhammad, he says something. Allah, he says something. The Muslim, they follow what Muhammad, he said. And here we see that those who obeys Muhammad, they has obeyed Allah necessarily. But it's not vice versa. Here we notice... <clears throat> That Muhammad always, you know, he gave himself elevation over mankind and over God, and he is the one in charge of the whole universe. If the Muslims agree that Muhammad is a sinner and he commits sin, and this is all over the Quran, so how 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 Allah he say obey a sinner? If you obey a sinner, you obey Allah. What is the guarantee that Muhammad will not do something wrong? Actually. Even Muslims, they agree that shaitan, he throws satanic verses in Muhammad's mouth. The Quran says that Allah said to Muhammad, ask Allah for forgiveness for your sin. <clears throat> uh, a person who is Allah saying to him, ask Allah for forgiveness for your sin, then how he is the one we can take his obedience over uh, the obedience of the God of Islam. If he is truly God, so you know, always, always the Muslims they try to present themselves as people who worship one God, but the fact they don't worship God, they worship only Muhammad, only not to anyone. Allah is not really, you see, they say we ask Allah for forgiveness, uh, Muhammad is his servant, but if we read all the Quran verse by verse, we will find. That there is one God and that is Muhammad. Where the Quran is coming from? From Muhammad. Who said that in the Quran? Muhammad. If there's any witnesses, no. Who? Muhammad. Everything in the Quran is Muhammad and Muhammad only. Who speak about Jesus? Muhammad. Did did Muhammad meet Jesus? No. They say to us, we cannot uh, uh, believe in Paul because Paul did not meet Jesus. Muhammad came six hundred years after Paul, after Jesus, but yet they they believe in Muhammad. And Paul, yes, he did meet with Jesus and he spoke with him. So they try always to fabricate lies in order to get away with their deception. When, when the Quran speak about sin, we will find that Muhammad, he take a part in the sin of Islam. He is a big, fat thin, you know, sinner. Uh, as an example here in this verse, let us show you this verse. Quran says that Allah is going to forgive for you your 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 past and your coming sin as you see in chapter 48 verse number 2 that Allah may forgive thee for the sin that which to come which in the past and which to come now here we notice the Quran speak always about me and this is very stupid because if Allah is God 
what he mean by me is he sure don't he know the future is it really a forgiveness or maybe and if it's maybe that's mean Allah is making a wish to someone else because if God is God he don't say me your sin will be forgiven me oh you see <clears throat> If I am praying for you, I say, may the Lord forgive your sin. That is acceptable because I am a human being and the forgiveness of your sin is not in my hand. The one who forgive you is God. So I'm asking God. So I say, may God forgive you for your sin. But when Allah, he says, may forgive, that is a joke. And this is a stupid. So here we notice that Muhammad, the sinner, he is in charge of the obedience. And the Muslims, they have to obey him first. And then how you say that even his sin may be forgiven. And then you say the one who obey Muhammad, he obey Allah. Which means the one who obey a sinner who need forgiveness, we need to obey him. If he was so good, then why he commit sin? Why he don't make himself obedience to God? Because when you don't, when you do sin, as it says here, that means you are not being obedient to God. So how the one who is not obedient to God, the Quran says, obey him, whoever obey him, who obey Allah. I hope you are getting my idea. Now we go back to the, uh, the, the comment this Abdul, he posed for us. Because here we have a problem, additional problem. <clears throat> In chapter 2, verse number 213, when, when the Muslim, they pose for us this verse and they say that mankind was as one religion before deviation. Uh, obviously, this verse is speaking that mankind have one belief. But the question is, why the Muslim between between two brackets, they say before their deviation? Is it the, the, the human being is the one who divide the religion if it was one? Or it was the plan of Allah? It's the, the, the very funny about this funny cult, stupid cult, that according to Islam, Allah is the one who divide us. And then because he divide us, he decide to send the prophet to unite us. <laughs> you believe it? Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Let us prove that. I hope people, they are listening, they are taking a reference. So when you debate with Muslims, you know what we are talking about. Are we taking a reference, guys? Are we taking a reference? Please do. Uh, you can save the video, but it's better always to take reference. So when you need a topic, you will not need a question, friends, to show you. And this is the benefit of showing you in the screen. And there's no better place, no better way to explain to you what we are talking about. So he, here we see that mankind was one religion. So this was confirmed. It was one religion. Okay, that's wonderful. Now the question is, before their deviation, and then Allah, he sent the prophet to bring of good tiding and warner to send down then the scriptures. Okay, so there was one religion. People, they divided each other. And then Allah, he sent messengers to save us and make us united once again under one religion. And that is in the verse number 319, which the Muslim Abdul, he chose for us. That is Islam as we see. So did you get the message that, that Abdul trying to say to us? Did you get the, the message? So we, we, we used to be one religion. Then we have deviation. We are divided in worshiping, in belief. Then Allah, he sent messengers to save us. And then Allah, for sure, the religion for him, there's one religion only, that is Islam. Now let us go to the Quran and get this Abdul busted and try not to laugh. Let us see. You will see immediately how stupid this cult is. This is the most stupid religion ever, ever exists to mankind. If we go in the Quran, <clears throat> we will find the following. Chapter 6, verse number 17, it says, Had Allah willed, they had not been idolaters. <laughs> Okay, so the will of who that you are an idolater? It is the will of, of, of who? When somebody worship idols or worship someone other than Allah, this is the will of Allah. So how Allah, in the verse you showed us, you showed us here, it says 
that you, you know, Allah is going to send us messengers to make us one religion again if the idolatry is what it was the plan of Allah. I mean, how stupid that is. Allah, He made us worship idols, and then Allah will send us, you know, and then He call it here that this is, was our idea, it was our deviation. But the fact in the verse we see in the front of us here, it says it was Allah deviation. It was the plan of Allah. Allah had willed, if Allah had willed, they had not. So this is was the will of Allah. Hmm? And you, Muhammad, you have no business with them. You are not the one, the keeper over them. And you are not responsible. So what Muhammad for? So why Muhammad, he says, I want to go to kill them. I want to do jihad against them. I will slaughter them. I, I, I've been ordered, I, I've been commanded that I to fight all mankind until they pay the jizya or, I, or they convert to Islam. All right? So you notice here, uh, A very clear contradiction in this story but look the drama is not over yet this verse here in front of us confirm that it was Allah will that people they com they commit idolatries and they are worshiping other God but if we go in the Quran we will see some other verses which is making things more stupid and more funny let us try that if we go here in the Quran we will find many many funny stories and one of them Actually, I want to go first to here. Remember, this guy in his picture, he quote for us, chapter 2, verse number 213, right? Okay. I want to go here in chapter 2, verse number 2013 Allah, he sent the messenger to tell us the truth. But Allah, he put a seal over our hearing, over our heart. How stupid you are that you want to guide me, but yet you make me blind. You want me to hear you, but you make me deaf. You want me to see you, but you make me blind. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? If Allah, he put a seal over our hearing and over our heart, and over our eyes and then yet Muhammad he will guide us how we can be guided <laughs> you see you are the one who quote for me chapter 2 verse number 13 Abdul but you notice that you are quoting for me from the cow chapter which is made by a cow obviously I never heard of a stupid mythology or ideology or philosophy Saying that I want to guide you to the truth, but I am the one who is going to see your hearing and your eyes and your heart. Right? This is madness. And this is a stupidity. But who is more stupid than Allah? Nobody. Nobody can beat Allah in stupidity. If we continue... We will find there is more verses in the Quran saying clearly that Allah is the one who made us believe in different religion and he is the one who deceive us. If we go here, little bit here, it says, <clears throat> chapter 5 verse number 80 or 48, sorry. I want the Abdul who posed for us. You know what? I'm going to post. I'm going to put his picture next to this thing. 
okay do you remember what he said here that mankind was one religion do you remember chapter 2 verse number 230 mankind used to be one religion okay let us do this actually um We will do here. Let us do it here. Okay. We will go back to the verse he posed for us. Where is the verse he posed for us? At 2 to 13. All right. I will put them side by side. This is the point. So you can see the stupidity of the of the author of the Quran. How he contradicts himself left and right. All right. Okay. Now we take this one down. And now we go here. I have to make my frame wide so we can see the writing in both. All right. <clears throat> Guys, try to read with me and see why I am saying this book is made by a stupid person. Guaranteed. Those are two verses. One is quoted for us by the Abdul from Facebook, if you remember which is a chapter 2 verse number 213 and the one in the right here is a chapter 5 verse number 48 all right so now let us compare between both mankind were one community and Allah he sent to them prophet to unite them together to bring them the good news the scriptures so he can what so they might judge between mankind concerning what they differ about. So it is our differed, correct? Who is the one who made this different? Differ it's us. They are differed, not his. But look in chapter 5, verse 48, what it says. It says here that uh, had Allah willed, he could have made you one community. <laughs> But you just said that we were one community. How stupid is that? You made us one community, you idiot. But he continues saying that yes, had Allah will to make you one community, mean that this is was Allah plan to make you not one community. So he made you as you are. You see here the translation is not really good. Let me let me a little bit change the translation. Let us change the translator so we show you how stupid this is. I will go. Let us switch to another donkey. Let us see. Yusuf Ali. Let us see Yusuf Ali. Where is Yusuf Ali? <clears throat> What is that? Okay. All right. Read with me carefully, please. So, he said, if Allah had willed, if, ha if Allah had so willed, he would made you one single people. But his plan is to test you in what he has given you but look what he said here Allah has made us one community already 
and then he accused us that this is our differ but it was his plan to make us divided guys do you notice what i'm saying about how you if he willed he will make us one community he already willed and he here we go we were one community what so what the verse is saying that allah he made us one community and then allah had a plan if allah willed to keep us one community then we will stay one community look what but he have a plan and the plan is to be divided so he will put us into trial so allah playing games with us and this is what we showed you in the other verse uh, you know you are you, uh, if allah wanted them not to be idolater they will not worship idol adulter like uh, idols but this is allah plan so allah plan is to make you a disbeliever allah plan to make you christian to make you a jew to make you a hindu and then this is allah he, he want to play games he decide to make you communities and then he will send the prophets and those prophets they will invite you to islam so allah he is the one who messed it up allah is the one who deceived us allah is the one who made a plan you see can you stand against the plan of allah if allah decide to make us a christian if allah is god who can say no nobody if somebody worshiping whatever a stone cow donkey tree whatever so if allah this is his plan that's it so allah he made us one community but it was his plan to divide us so what so what, what is the job of the devil are we getting the point guys if allah is the one who divided us so what is the job of mr mr shaitan <laughs> and remember don't forget that muhammad in the hadith he made it clear that everything we do in our life is based on Allah plan if you remember the debate between uh, Adam and uh, uh, Musa's which is very fine debate I mean how Adam he met with Musa's this is stupid but welcome to Muhammad's stories bedtime story so when Adam and uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and Musa's they have a debate When Moses accused Adam that because of you we are out of heaven, Adam he said to him, You cannot blame me for fate written for me 40 years before Allah created me, as you see. You cannot you cannot blame me. Allah wrote my fate. So what it's mean here that the fate you have in your life to be a Christian or to be a Muslim or to be a Hindu is written for you before you are created. So what is the point of this stupid religion? Why Adam was punished and went sent out of heaven if this is what Allah he wrote for him in his plan? Are we listening, guys? So Allah divide us. Allah have a plan to divide us. Allah want us to go out of heaven. Allah want us to be deceived. Allah want us to be Christian and Jews and Muslims and Hindu and Buddhas. And then Allah playing and continue his game. And then he want to blame us for our sin which he wrote for us. The same exactly what happened to the victim here in the story of Adam. If you remember once, I was debating a Muslim. He said that Allah, he wanted to be known. You remember? Who remember the debate? I asked him what, why Allah he did that with Adam. He said, yes, because Allah, he wanted to be known. So Adam was his victim. He said that to me. You can watch the debate. Allah wanted to be known. Okay, I'm going to be known now. I'm going to go to the highway and start shooting people. I will be in CNN in two seconds. So to be known is to play around and to have a victim. This is God in Islam. <coughs> and here we notice <coughs> that the idea of worshipping this God is useless because at the end of the day, you worship him, you don't worship him. He have a fate for you before he created you. If you remember, when when Aisha she said to Muhammad uh, after the funeral of a child an infant child uh, she said to Muhammad that this child is going to be a bird from the bird of paradise Muhammad he said to her don't be stupid Allah he created for those who they are in paradise when they are 
in the backbone of their father and he created those who will go to, to heaven when they are in the backbone of their father so it doesn't matter if you commit sin or not read with me Allah messenger Aisha she's saying Aisha the wife of Muhammad speaking there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise for it commit no sin nor had reached the age when one can commit sin he said Aisha per adventure which means don't be stupid it may be the otherwise which mean what which mean maybe he go to hell hold on this is the child who did not reach the age of sin and he never commits sin so why it is possible to go for to go to hell Muhammad explained because God created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were in their father backbone not lions this is fast translation here and he created for hell those who are to go to hell he created them for hell while they were in their father backbone okay what what, what do you understand from this that's mean you commit sin or not who care here we go this is a child this is a baby how how honest innocent you can be more than this a baby he died and they went to the funeral and I is assuming based in logic that if you don't commit sin you go to heaven Muhammad is saying no that's a stupid of you to say committing sin or not committing sin have nothing to do with going to heaven in Islam guys are you getting the idea no my Skype is not open yet people are you uh, do you get the idea so what the point of converting to Islam here we go. This child is a son of a Muslim man, a Muslim mother, and he is born of a Muslim family, and he is an infant, and he never commits sin. He never did wrong, yet he might go to hell. Why? Because the stupid God of Islam, he wrote his fate before he created him. How stupid that religion is. So why you say to us, pray to Allah, convert to Islam, say Shahada, kiss the black stone, worshiping black stone, uh, and lick it, which is a vagina. And then you say to me that if even if you are a Muslim, even if you are born of a Muslim family, even if you never commit sin, Allah, he wrote your fate where you will go to hell or to heaven, regardless what you do. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Not only that. Muhammad he confirmed in a different place something is even more dangerous look what Muhammad he said this is what happened when a monkey became a prophet what you can do a chimpanzee taking taking over the business Muhammad here in those stories and this is Sahih al-Bukhari Muslim they cannot say uh, uh, you know this is a lie so look here, Muhammad he is telling us what happened to you. When you are created, you are going to be for 40 days in your mother womb for as a sperm. By the way, this is absolutely dumb and stupid because a sperm does not stay 40 days alive. That's a lie. And then you will turn into a congealed blood. And that is another stupid mistake because there is no sperm will transform into anything and there is no stage of the baby will be dead blood. Here, this is a clot. It's a congealed blood. Equal days for 40 days. And then you will be to a piece of a flesh. I will be in a piece of flesh for a similar period, which means the total of my creation is 140 days. 40 days of them, I am a sperm. Okay, I was on vacation, being a sperm in, the, in my mother. And when Allah sent his angel and ordered him to write four things, okay, i.e., his provision, his age, whether he will be good or bad, blessed or not, in the hereafter. Do you see it? So, this is your destiny written for you before even you are not even born yet. Allah, he write for you your destiny. And then Muhammad here explained more. So then his soul is breathing to him, which is stupid because you have a soul from day number one when you are growing as an egg. That's it. You have life. This is what soul is about. And by Allah, a person among you, may do the deeds of people of hell of fire till there is only a cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and the fire but then what that is written by allah allah has ordered the angel to write proceed 
and then he does the deed of people of paradise and he entered it <laughs> have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this before so brother brother you do the deed of hellfire which like what you don't kill christians you don't kill jews you don't rape women you don't beat your wife this is the deed of hellfire in islam you don't do child molestation that's mean you're a bad person and then almost oh, you are like okay uh, uh, sorry the opposite like you know you are you are doing the the bad deed so then when you go almost you are going to enter into hell suddenly what is written by Allah will take over Allah will format your computer and then what is written by Allah will start in action activated and then you start doing what Allah wrote for you and because of that you enter paradise do you see how beautiful this news have you ever so why I want to do good deed or bad deed because at the end of the day what is written by Allah is going to take over me are we listening people as long what is written by Allah is going to take over and this is what is final and this is what is important who care about what I would do now You have to be a certified donkey to believe in this garbage. So what's the point of Islam? Nothing. And by the way, this is Sahih Bukhari. The Muslim, they cannot say this is weak, this is da'if, you know. This is madness. This is stupidity. So in Islam, there's no point of being a Muslim. There's no point of a praying because, okay, let me make it clear for you here. Let us say somebody, he was not praying to Allah five times. He was not fasting Ramadan. He is not doing jihad. He is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, watching porn, which will be a bad deed for him. You know, like, I mean, because if you watch porn, that will, be, will give you good deeds. Uh, you are not dreaming about the version of Allah who have a very big ass. All of, all those things will not give you the, the the you know the the way to go to heaven, but look, you are doing all the bad things in your life, which is not to kill a Christian, not to rape women, not to steal, etc. Because you are allowed to steal from Christians and from the Jews, you are not doing jihad, you are not killing Christians, which is bad for Allah. Even though you are doing that, you are not doing what Allah asks you. Before you enter heaven, almost you are going to go to hell, like almost you are in the door of hell, as you see, almost. Almost the angel will push you, they will, they will put their foot in your ass and they will push you inside. What is written by Allah will take over. And then suddenly you start doing jihad and killing Christians and Jews and shooting in the Christmas uh, market or do be heading for two European girls who they are going to Morocco. Suddenly. And then you go to paradise. So what is the point of me converting me or saying to me if you worship Allah if you believe etc you go to paradise if this is not what will happen because what is written for me is written for me and I cannot change that if there is any Muslim in the chat that is the most stupid religion ever I never saw stupid religion more than this. I mean, you have to be certified donkey to believe in this cult. Because there's two kinds of donkeys. There's donkey who get certification and there's donkeys who they are not educated. Right? How this is can be a religion? And what, what is the logic? What is the And look, he continue here. And he, he, brother, he, he who does the deeds of people of paradise and enter it. And a man do the deeds of the people of paradise till there's only a cubit or two between him and the paradise. This guy was a good guy all his life. He joined ISIS. He joined Al-Qaeda. He kidnapped a Yazidi girls, a Christian girls. He did all what Allah asked him to do. He slaughtered people. He cheated his wife. 
he have sex with many women he have for for some party all the good deeds of Islam and almost now he will enter paradise but look what will happen and then then what is written proceed and he does the deeds of people of fire and he entered oops poor guy all his life was doing Allah will and then Allah now what he wrote for him before he created him take over and he go to hell <clears throat> what do you think if this is God who is Satan <laughs> if this is God who is Satan you tell me I'm not going to stay long here. I just wanted to share with you and show this Abdul how stupid they are when they speak to us. Uh, and, and you know, the funny they quote for us verses, they sound nice. What about you quote for us the Quran where Allah He said that He is going to spread hate and enmity between the Christians? You know, oh Christians, let us come together in one agreement. Look how nice it is. Like agreement? Isn't your Quran says kill the Christians and humiliate them? Spit in their face, make them walk in the sewage. Isn't the Quran said, I'm going to spread hatred and enmity between the Christians until judgment day? Why you don't post for us those verses? You don't like us to see them? Is it this is Quran? Allah will spread hatred and enmity between us until the day of resurrection. Why? What is the benefit of Allah if he spread hatred between the Christians? If if Allah is the one who spread hatred, so who is the devil? Huh? If this is Allah plan to spread hatred between us, so why you say to Christian Prince, Christian Prince, you are full of hate, accuse me of hate when the hate is is uh, the hate vendor is your God. No, by the way, we don't hate Muslims. That's a big fat lie. As you see, it's your God. In chapter 5, verse number 51, the Quran says it clearly that you cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends. And if you take them as a friends, you are to be killed. You are the enemy of Allah. If you take them as a friend, you are one of them. What does that mean? It means you are najis. You are filthy, you are an enemy of Allah, and then the Muslim they will practice chapter 9, verse 29 on you to kill you. <clears> oh, <throat> who you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians as a friends, they are friends to each other. He among you who take them uh, for a friend is one of them, as simple as that. Do you see it? What kind of religion is religion? In chapter 9, verse 29, it says, Even you cannot take even your own family as a friend. Your father, your brother, if they are not Muslims. So the second you convert to Islam, you get need to get ready that, uh, that your family they should be considered as your enemy. For Allah says that in the Quran, and you cannot say no to Allah. Be careful, right? I mean, this God, He will not be happy. Oh, who you believe, choose not your father and your brother as a friends. I cannot take my father and my brother from my blood as a friend. Why? Why? Because they choose not to believe. So what does that mean if they cannot be our friend? That means they are enemies. My father, the one who spent his life working hard to feed me when I was a child, I cannot be his friend. Why? You see, this is not a metaphorical thing. It's not like, okay, you have to love God more than, more than anyone else. No, this is, you cannot be friend with them. Just normal friend. Well, here, my friend, but protector actually is more important from friends. Awliya is both. 
awliya is both it is a friend and protector because the one who who protect you the muslim they try to translate it as a, as awliya as a, as a as a protector but even when they do that they get themselves more poopoo why because awliya as if if they translate it as a protector that's mean that this person is more than a friend who is going to protect you unless he is really 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 someone really care for you you know what i mean i can have a friend but necessary not necessarily he is going to defend me and die for me do you understand when they say protector the muslim they try to make it look nicer but the fact protector is more ugly because if he is my protector yet i will not accept him as protector why and this is a proof that those people they don't want to kill me because they are my protectors how they are my enemy but yet they are my protectors <clears throat> and this goes for anything they take not christians and jews that goes to anything that if, if the government is a christian or jews or even chinese or even hindus doesn't matter that goes for everybody muslims are not allowed to take non-muslims as protectors or friends all right so we have always to be careful when muslims they speak to us and they say i have a friend you see once i was in the philippine doing a doing a seminar i have a I, I was speaking to a senator and now he is the 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 foreign minister of the philippine is a senator katayano uh, uh, uh a minister from canada in a, in a church is called anabaptist this idiot he says to me because he heard me speaking about you know how we can sign peace agreement with the muslims in the philippine and they believe in this what is the guarantee for the christians so the guy he said to me so what do you do i said as you see you know this is what I do, you know. I'm teaching people. He said, "Ah, oh, you are the kind who divide people." I said, "I'm dividing. I'm dividing people." He said, "Yes, you know, the, you are quoting for us things to divide people." I said, "This is what the Quran saying. You, if the Quran saying that, and you think that this is divide people, that's mean the Quran is bad, not me." Do you see how idiot he is? This is a Christian minister. He accused me. I am dividing people. I'm just quoting the Quran for you. And this is why we have to be careful in our churches. We have many idiots who, who try to spread poison. I went to the Facebook of this guy. Every day he posts something nice about Muhammad in his Facebook. And he is a Christian minister. Supposedly. Trying to deceive your children and make you believe that Muhammad is a wonderful man. Muhammad, he called, he called our family, the Muhammad who raped our women, Muhammad, he destroyed our churches, Muhammad who said, if I am victorious, I will expel all the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. Yet you will find someone who work as a minister in a church, trying to present to us the devil as an angel. And he accused me that I am dividing the people. See, this is Muhammad. How you are saying to us, how you are lying to people saying, Muhammad is a wonderful man. Like he posts in Facebook saying, the best of you is the one, the best for mankind. The prophet said so. That's a lie. Quote correctly. The best of us as Muslims is the one who bring them with the chains around their neck. You see how they deceive you? Who is the best for mankind in Islam? Is a Muslim who do jihad and he bring you like a goat and he put a chain around your neck. Read it. I'm not making things up. So my friend, we have to be careful even when someone he claimed to be a Christian minister. He might be the devil himself. There's things you need to know. When you go to a church, ask your minister about Islam. If he starts saying to you, a Muslim believe in Abraham the same as we do, we have the same God as they do. This guy he served the devil. He don't say he don't serve Jesus. Let me ask you, my friend. Isn't it the Bible says the one who denied the father and the son is the liar, is an antichrist? Yes or no? 
or I'm making things up. Is that true? So how this minister, he says to us that we believe in the same God. How the Bible says, whoever deny, it doesn't matter who, without mentioning the name of the religion, whoever deny the Father, the Son, is an antichrist. And then this filthy minister who is coming to you in the clothes of a sheep, but he is wolf, saying to you that we worship the same God. Suddenly, they don't remember the verses of the Bible. Suddenly, they are perfectly correct. For they are people doing business. And God, how many there are. There is tons of churches full of people like Muhammad doing business. And by the way, when you don't do business, you stay poor. When you do business, you get rich. One of the reasons I am not really welcomed in many, many churches because I say things as it is. Because I'm not doing business. I'm not speaking things people like to hear. Jesus was not doing business. Jesus, he made everybody around him angry. The same as all the apostles. They've been chased, they've been killed, they've been crucified, they've been captured, they've been beheaded, they've been fed to animals just because they are saying things nobody likes to hear. When evil people start to glorifying you, that means obviously you are not with Jesus. And I don't care really how many people like what I say. People, they say Christian, sometimes I receive messages from Christians saying to me, oh, you are very harsh with Muslims. Okay, my friend, you are not harsh with Muslims. How many Muslims left Islam all your life? You know what I mean? I mean, look how silly they are. Okay, you are not harsh with Muslims. How many Muslims you brought them to Christ in your lifetime? In the last week, I have more than 25 Muslims left Islam. And many of them, you heard them saying that life on air. So how you accuse me to be harsh if this is working very good? I am harsh because I love them, not because I hate them. If you see someone going to hellfire, worshiping the wrong God, the false God, what do you do? You relax? Obviously, you don't care for him. You say to him, it's okay to be a Muslim? Don't worry, be happy. Where is Jesus on you? So they say to you, you are being harsh. You are not being Christian. Who said to you that to be Christian is not to be harsh? Just today, 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 we have two people left Islam life on air. And one of them accepted Christ. Just a few hours ago, Four hours ago. You can watch the, the, the previous debate and you will see. So they give you, they lecture you about being Christian. And look how funny it is what we see and what we witness. A Muslim, he make fun of you 24 hours, seven days a week for being a Christian, for being nice. You remember what happened to our brother David Wood? David Wood was very kind. He went in the stage, he speak with respect, right? He was not rude. He was very polite. And the Muslim made mockery of him for he was being polite. Do you think they can do that to me? They were not even there to get a close. They take advantage of you when you are nice. And let me tell you why the Muslims, they take advantage of you. Because many of you do not know that the Muslims believe in what the Quran said about that Allah he cursed us and he made us nice it's a curse you believe it so when you are a kind of Christian the Muslim they believe that this is this is not like because you are, we are not because because Jesus made you a peaceful person no this is because Allah cursed you read with me the Quran it's chapter 3 verse number 112 Allah he made you like that he cursed you. 
you will be humiliated. Do you see it? And this is why you will see the Muslims, they don't even get don't they don't even dare to call me. Who call me? You will not see someone he claimed to be a scholar. The one who call me is the one who don't have a career to lose. The one who have a career to lose, which means they are making a business, making money, uh, you know, uh, those are the one who will not dare to call me. The one who call me is someone he is not known. Or even the one who is known, he changed his voice. He don't give his name. And by the way, I am not really harsh with everybody. I am harsh with the one deserve to be harsh. Today, how many hours today we spoke with this gentleman? Do you remember? If you watch the debate today, there's a guy who called me in the beginning. I was harsh on him because he have a big mouth. Then we have a second guy. It was in the middle, was very nice. Then we have a second guy. I spoke to him almost for two hours. And then he left Islam and then he accepted Jesus. I was very kind with him. I change the tone of my speech depend who is talking to me. How honest, how liar he is, how much games he's playing. So I don't go harsh on everybody. Depend who you are. Well, my my Skype is not on really. I, I don't feel like talking in Skype anyway. But uh, uh, I wanted to share this uh, this video with you. So we can, you know, we can answer the Abdul claim, and same time, remember always, being harsh does not mean you don't, you don't, you know, you hate people. This is absolutely false. If you have a son, he's taking drugs. What do you do? You just let him do it, or you scream at his face, trying to guide him, trying to show him that this is wrong. What do you do? A person who don't care for his son taking drugs, it's mean he don't care for him to die. It's mean he don't love him. As simple as that. Go, go take the drugs. Okay, go. That is not because we hate anyone. That's because we care for them. Anyway, uh, we are going to end the video with, with this for today. You see not many people here only like 360 because it's very late but anyway people later they will be live and they will be able to watch the video and they will be able to learn i always i ask you if you don't mind download the video share them in facebook share them wherever you can even save them in your computer one day you will read reference you can name them the way you want you can add notes to the computer file uh, do whatever you need uh but education is very important and this person his name is a christian prince time will come and he will die he will go none of us is stoning you know jesus he said that the dead bury the dead so we are dead people already but we have generation to come and we have to carry on with knowledge what you learned you teach to someone else and me myself one day i was i was a child i know nothing but I learned, I spent all my life studying. So let us share knowledge and let us not to be uh, selfish. Because this is the this is the this is the problem in you know for many people, they are very selfish. All what they care for is you know me and me and me, and that's it. And what happened to the to the people after me who care? So let us be, be people who care for others, share the truth, and learn and educate others. And this way. We will give the flu shot to ch to our children so the flu will not enter our house. And the second the flu enter your house, it's very hard to kick it out. Everybody will start sneezing. Don't wait until that moment. And I'm giving here the flu shot. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all and I'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. See you.